not really because I know it comes part of the job um, and especially being in the couple as well who's like Mark's obviously in the public eye so you're always going to get that and it's just one of them where you have to just you know go along with it it's hard it is hard sometimes like you don't want to be pictured when you leave the gym with your hair messy and no makeup on but it just comes part of the job well good luck with the ordinary lies uh, which uh, starts uh, BBC One tomorrow night at nine o'clock thank you very much thank for you very much. today. thank you lovely to meet you good luck with the wedding thank you um, Time to go to Carol now, who has a look at this morning's weather for us. Morning, Carol. Good morning. The weather today is fairly mixed, and in fact, you could say the same thing about the weather for this week. Most of the week, it is going to feel cold. We'll have quite a keen northwesterly wind. There will be sunshine and showers. Wednesday looks like being the driest day. Then Thursday and Friday, we see a return to wet and windy conditions. Now, this morning, it's been a cold start in the southeast. Here we've got some sunshine, but we also have a cold weather front draped across parts of the southwest Wales and the Midlands heading into northeast England. That's sinking south, and behind that, some brighter skies with some sunshine and some showers. Even into the afternoon, we still have the thicker cloud with that weather front across southwest England, Wales, the Midlands, heading up into parts of Lincolnshire and Yorkshire. To the south of that, as the cloud builds, it will be bright rather than sunny. But behind it, we are looking at sunshine for Northern England, North Wales, Northern Ireland and Scotland. But even so, there will be some showers around. Now, some of the showers will be heavy and thundery with some hail. And on the hills of Scotland and Northern Ireland, there will be some snow. It's a cold front, as I mentioned, that's sinking south. And as it does so, it moves away. Behind it, we're all going to be bathed in colder conditions. So here's our weather front as we head into the early evening. By the time we get to the overnight period, the rain will have pepped up and be in the southeast. But behind it, there will be clear skies. It's going to be cold, there'll be some pockets of frost and still some showers. And those showers still falling as snow in the hills of Scotland and also Northern Ireland. But we'll start to see some of that snow accumulate. Now, first thing tomorrow morning, we still will have the front in the southeast. It looks like through the morning it will clear away, but it may slow down. And if that happens, it will be quite a drab day across East Anglia and the southeast. But in current thinking, that front is moving away onto the near continent, leaving all of us with a day of sunshine and showers and a keen northwesterly wind. Now, that will really take the edge off the temperatures, which at best are going to be between 7 and 10 Celsius. Also, in some of the showers, expect some hail, some thunder and lightning. And even at lower levels for a time, there will be a wintry mix, a little bit of sleet, but it shouldn't prove to be problematic. Then for Wednesday, a ridge of high pressure settles in, so it will be cold and frosty to start with, but there'll be a lot of sunshine, and then later in the day, the next front comes in from the west. So to put pictures on that, you can see the tail end of a front in the far southeast, a lot of dry and fine weather, and then later on, a front comes in bringing wet and windy weather. But the timing of this particular front could change. If it slows up, Northern Ireland will have a drier day. If it speeds up, western fringes of the UK will have a wetter day. So it's all hanging in the balance at the moment, Sal and Charlie. Hanging in the balance. Oh, no. Thanks, Carol. Thanks, Carol. 8.49 the time now. Once upon a time, most dogs spent their days outdoors. These days, though, many are at home alone while their owners are at work. Now, some vets are warning that a growing number of dogs and other pets are suffering from separation anxiety. Let's talk about this now with Cathy Phillips, who's a dog behaviourist and runs a training school, and Sam Gaines, from the RSPCA who is in our London studio. Morning to you Sam, if I can Hello. start with you, this must be a really worrying trend for you. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, we've certainly seen an increase in around the stats for the number of dogs that are suffering from separation-related behaviour. Um, a very recent study showed that of the dogs that they were studying, 85% of those showed some signs of struggling when they were left alone. So obviously it's a very large-scale um, problem, but also it's very hidden as well, because by its very nature, you only know that your dog has got separation-related behaviour problems um, if you can actually observe them when you're not there, because the behaviours are generally only exhibited once the owner has left the house although in some cases some dogs will get anxious before they go so it really is you know a significant problem and what are the things to look for well, the sort of things that um, I guess you'd see more frequently are things like coming back and your dog having destroyed something in the house, either going to the toilet um, as well, so sort of you know, weed around the house. And often you'll hear dogs vocalising as well, so you may hear some howling, some whining or some barking. But you also see sort of le 